1983, Iron Maiden released their fourth studio album, Peace of Mind, which was simply packed with many references to movies, poems and other literary work, whether it was on Where Eagles Dare, The Trooper, Quest for Fire or the album's closing track to Tame a Left. And while lyrically most of those would be self-sufficient and easily understood by an average heavy metal fan, Peace of Mind's outro was simply packed with seemingly senseless words or sounds, such as Fremen, Kaladan, Gom Jabbar or Muad'Dib, which would make absolutely zero sense to most, as by May of 1984 they were not yet popularized by Hollywood and thus the only way to comprehend the meaning of To Tame Land would be through familiarizing yourself with the novel Dune. <laughs> by the band's bassist and founder Steve Harris, to Tame Land was an ode to the fictional world created by the American author Frank Herbert. Interestingly enough, in one of the 1984 interviews, Steve Harris actually said that to Tame Land is the best song he's ever written, adding that he was really pleased with Phantom, but now he has to say that this is the best one. Which, let's be honest here, after the release of Number of the Beast, which featured quite many songs written by Steve, including Hallowed Be Thy Name, was a rather bold statement. But anyways, the band's original intention for the song's title was in fact much more straightforward just do. Yet after what I assume they thought was just a formality and sending a letter to Frank Herbert's agent asking him whether it was okay to use the title Dune, Iron Maiden unexpectedly received a decline for the request, which read as follows. No, because Frank Herbert doesn't like rock bands, particularly heavy rock bands, and especially rock bands like Iron Maiden. What? Now most of you guys know how much I love Iron Maiden, but I gotta give that agent some credit. That was some sassy old man's response, and I absolutely love it. Either way, after the initial decline, Steve Harris personally tried to convince the Herpert's team that the song would only popularize the novel even more. Yet after the author's agents threatened Iron Maiden with legal actions, to the point of them even stopping Peace of Mind from coming out altogether if Maiden would go with the title Dune for their last song on the album. And which, in all fairness, they most likely would have succeeded if it would come to it, Steve Harris and the team decided to back down and instead name the track to tame and land. And here's the thing. And I do understand that it may be so simply because I am used to this title as this is the one that I've known this song for pretty much my entire life. But I actually think that it works much better for this track. And it perfectly matches the song's mysterious and enchanting sound. The time will come for him to lay claim his crown. But still, it looks like Iron Maiden truly believed that the request to call this song Dune was just a mere formality, as the very first print of Peace of Mind vinyl records actually had that song as Dune on the tracklist. And I guess we may assume that the inner sleeves of that first press were actually printed a little later, as those already had a correct name of the song on it alongside its duration. Which by the way, at 7 minutes and 26 seconds made To Tame a Land the longest song Iron Maiden have written by then. Although it didn't hold that status for long, as we all know which album has come out next. But nevertheless, despite obviously not being too happy about the fact that they had to change the song's title, Iron Maiden still decided to thank Frank Herbert. In their Iron Maiden want to thank the following section on their Peace of Mind inner sleeve and openly thanking Frank Herbert for the inspiration for their works. Although, of course, it did not stop Bruce Dickinson from being rather open about just how unpleasant it was for him, including Bruce going as far as calling Frank Herbert a bit of a cunt. At a concert in Stockholm, Sweden on June 5th in 1983, as well as on several other occasions in the future. We were originally going to call the song on the album June, but Mr. Herbert thought that because we play heavy metal and because we were rockers basically, we were a bunch of thick fucking idiots, that's what we thought. So, 
being real good English gentlemen that we are, we said, well, <laughs> Frank Herbert, who was a but nevertheless, despite insisting on changing the song's title, it looks like Frank Herbert's team had absolutely zero problems with the actual lyrics of To Tame a Land, which still contain quite a lot of words and names Frank Herbert came up with, and some of which can only be found in Dune. And so here is a little piece of trivia for you guys, since I am a Ukrainian in Ukraine. But the words Sitch and Sitch Tober, used by Frank Herbert to describe the Freeman strongholds were actually inspired by the Ukrainian warriors and are taken from the Sabres of Paradise by Leslie Branch, as the word Siege simply means a Ukrainian Cossack stronghold and the word Tabir just means a cap. And the funniest thing, I was actually born in a place of the biggest Cossack siege, now this city of Zaporizhia, which sadly today is located just several dozens kilometers away from the front lines of the biggest war in Europe since World War II. Either way, right after its release in 1983, Peace of Mind has been praised by most critics and heavy metal fans around the world, and To Tame a Land, being the first epic of the new era of Iron Maiden, of course played a huge role in this. In addition, in 1984, the first major film adaptation of Dune, directed by nobody else but David Lynch, has hit the screens, bringing this sci-fi novel to the masses even more, and thus, of course, helping many new die-hard Dune fans discover for themselves a wonderful world of Iron Maiden. Although, of course, the band still did not miss a chance to reference Frank Herbert on the cover of their 1986 Somewhere in Time, which is in fact quite sad, since the author passed away later that same year. And since then, To Tame a Land has become one of the most beloved songs for Iron Maiden fans, and I actually know many who consider this track to be their favorite in the entire Iron Maiden catalog. And of course, this has become so not only because of its lyrical references to do. Although one of my personal favorite things about it is that it was able to perfectly capture the feelings of the planet Argus. It is almost like you can feel the heat and taste the sand in your mouth when listening to it. But nevertheless, the thing which has made it quite popular among the Iron Maiden fans is a rather creative compositional structure developed by Steve Harrison. As to Team Land features quite a lot of rather unexpected modulations throughout the entire song, and despite sounding undeniably Iron Maiden-like, was able to not only reference the works of Frank Herbert lyrically, but also, for example, those of the Spanish composer Isaac Albanese, who in his 1911 piece Astur Turias Leyenda right before going into the main guitar solo. Guys, here I just wanted to point out that only around 30% of the people who are watching my videos are actually subscribed to the Metal Pilgrim channel. So if for some reason you still haven't done so yet, and especially if this is not the first Up the Iron series video you're watching on this show, I would really appreciate it if you would consider doing it right now. Let's continue building this amazing heavy metal community together. We're gonna have a good time. Always. But nevertheless, despite all that, to Team Land was actually only performed live by Iron Maiden on their World Peace Tour back in 1983. And not even once in 41 years, including all of the retrospective tours Iron Maiden did since then, the band has played the song live in front of the fans. Although, if being fair, we have to point out that the World Peace Tour was so huge that only in 1983 alone Iron Maiden still performed the song live 130 times three times. I always loved metal and literature crossovers. I'll be very honest with you, the only reason I read For Whom the Bell Tolls for the first time was because it was one of my favorite Metallica songs. And the same goes for To Tame a Land. Initially, it was this track which has made me interested in the world of Dune, despite me not really being that much of a fan of sci-fi. And I truly believe that such references can help us enrich our music and only grow our community. And who knows, maybe with the new Dune movies, there will be more and more young people going down the rabbit hole and opening for themselves this amazing world of heavy metal just through this one song. 
And what do you guys think about the Tame Land, Dune, and the whole scandal between the band and Frank Herbert? Please let us know in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching this short video, guys, and we will prevail. Slava Ukraini!